Okay, how's everybody doing? I am going to be doing some videos here. Finally, I got some time on my hands. This has been a project that I've been trying to work on for a while now. I finally have time to do it. Uh, I know in a past video I said I was going to be updating the LED or the turn signals on my 2013 Kia Sorento. I have not done that yet. I still have the resistors. It's been, you know, a year, year and a half since I've gotten around to it. And uh, so I've got these bulbs here. These are the turn signals, uh, the rear turn signals. These are 1156 bulbs, but of course you can't uh, use those without it hyper flashing because you need a load resistor. On the front is 11. 57 or 2357 bulbs, but those are coming tomorrow via Amazon. So I'm kind of putting this on hold for just a little bit, but I actually got some regular bulbs or not regular low beams and high beams for the Kia. The high beams are okay, the stock ones, the stock low beams are atrocious. I have not updated it in quite a while because the last time I tried mounting these to the physical housing requires you to completely take out the the whole uh, headlight housing because uh, the last ones that I kind of experimented with and these are the ones that I settled on the uh, last fit uh, these are H yeah H11 bulbs the problem was is that so here's the mount for them is that these rotate they rotate via the actual mounting point the problem is is when you stick these in there when you try to rotate it it rotates the bulb it doesn't actually rotate this so the only way to get these in there secure is if you take out the whole LED housing so you can actually grab a hold of this and rotate the physical housing uh, I couldn't do it because on the driver's side, the battery, or not the battery, the fuse box is in the way. And on the other side, there's a, I think it's just a post, uh, the strut post, I believe. But, yeah, and not only that, but I have to take out the housing because I also need to do some soldering for the high beams. And the high beams are H1 bolts. And this is the, this is what they look like. Uh, these ones actually have fans on it. Actually, I think the other ones do too. Yeah, the H11s have fans built into it. And then the H1 bulbs have these little fans on it as well. These, I'm going to have to, have to actually cut the wires on the inside so I can actually physically solder these because of how the mounting is, which you'll see here in a little bit. But all of that is going to be um, maybe thrown into the same video. But I have these. These are H... Um, actually, I forgot what they were. They're like H16 bulbs, I believe. Actually, it tells me. Yeah. H16 bulbs. These are for the Toyota Corolla. Now, the stock fog lights had these bulbs in it. So they were okay, they weren't anything spectacular, but this one burnt out, but I actually don't think this burnt out. I think somebody got mad at me one day, and they actually kicked in my driver's side uh, fog light, because one day I noticed my fog lights, at least half of them weren't working, and when I went to go look at it, this was kind of in the mount, and it was sitting, you know, kind of twerked like that, and you can actually see this piece right here got broken. I don't know how anybody would or how this would have broken without some sort of brute force. Um, so this is actually the um, H16 LED bulbs that I got for this as well. And I'm actually going to be doing, uh, or I'm gonna be remounting this, installing these LEDs. This is from a brand called D-Lumin, Lumini, Lumania, Lumina, D-Lumina. Uh, so yeah, this is just going to be a huge video about updating a whole bunch of LEDs and lights on my cars because, like I said, the Kia had stock um, incandescent halogen, whatever the frick you want to call it, and they were 
terrible. So I'm going to be updating those once I actually remove the actual housing. But first, I'm going to get started on um, doing these, which is the LED or the fog lights for my Toyota Corolla. Now, on my Toyota Corolla, which I will try to maybe throw this into the video too, the stock uh, low beams or daytime running lights, whatever you want to call it, already has LEDs. But for the high beams, it has... Uh, a uh, 9005 bulbs which I will be getting and I will be updating those as well because those are a lot easier than the H1 bulbs but I haven't decided on the type of 9000 LED bulb that I want so let's go get started on this and get this all mounted and start taking the other one apart so as you can see here uh, my car is a little dirty uh, ignore it <laughs> so that is the fog light on the passenger side, which that's normal. And on this side, you can tell that this is broken and it's moving in its own little mount or whatever. It looks like somebody had to have kicked it in or something. I don't know. I don't know why somebody would, would do that, but because I didn't hit anything. I mean, if I hit something, unless I hit like a pole directly onto the light, which is very unlikely, but yeah, that got broke, so I'm gonna be trying to fix that and then mount those LEDs. So here you can see I've got the housing completely removed and this piece right here broke. This is the, I guess the height adjustment if you wanna point it more up or more down. The only thing I can think of is maybe putting some epoxy on there to put it back together you can see it's actually cracked right here kind of somebody had to have just maybe got mad at me for something i don't know maybe i parked in their parking spot and they got pissed and they were like you know what i'm gonna kick in his fog light i have no idea because i just don't know how this would have broken in this fashion so and this is the piece for this which this is supposed to mount right there which I'm, I'll probably just put some epoxy on there and put that on. Uh, but the problem was the mounting side for this. Uh, this is gone. There was a clip right here. You can see where it's kind of broke off. So I may just have to put a screw for this side or something to mount it back into place. So let me get this all apart and I will get the epoxy out and we'll start putting some epoxy on it stuff so the kind of epoxy I'm using is just this uh, JB weld clear weld so I'm going to be epoxying this piece together uh, this is the height adjustment or the direction adjustment and then I'm going to epoxy this uh, piece back onto the I guess fascia covering whatever you want to call it I don't have very much of this left so I'm going to try and use it as sparingly as possible Should be about good. Then I'll just get like a little wire tie so I can mix it around. So I'll dip this side in, get some epoxy on there. Same thing here. I do adjust both sides. This one is completely fixed. I had the um, epoxy, I let it dry. So now I'm going to turn the lights on. I can't really see that much in daylight, but they're actually pretty, pretty damn bright. Okay, so I have the bulbs installed on here. On the passenger side, it's fairly easy because you have room to access the bulb right there. 
and I just wire tied it so that the actual driver isn't touching anything because these ones that I bought, the 9005 bulbs, have a driver. And on this side, what I had to do is um, take off the two bolts for the uh, light and take off the black grill piece. It's just one bolt right here and then plastic little clip pieces. And then right here is the same thing. You take off this plastic clip so that you can just, you don't have to take the light all the way off. Just enough so that you can move it to get your hand in between the actual battery and the physical bulb but yeah so on the toyota you have daytime running lights which is the regular lights they're just kind of like in a low power mode but when you actually physically turn the lights on they get a little bit brighter now th those are my fog lights so those are daytime running lights. You turn on the lights, they get just a little bit brighter. Then those are my fog lights, which are ridiculous. And then those are my brights or high beams. Yeah, those are, those are ridiculous. Now, if I turn off my brights, and go to my fog lights. Do you think I already did this part? I don't know. You're my fog. <laughs> Things are ridiculous. So, yeah. So now I'm going to move on to the Sorrento lights LEDs. So I've got the passenger side headlight completely out of the Kia. Uh, what you have here is you've got two bolts on the top of the headlight. There's one bolt right here on the back side. Let's see if it'll pick it up. There's one bolt right there, if you can see. And then you'll have to take off. There's a bolt here and a bolt here. Uh, and then you've got those little Phillip clips that will have to come out. So you'll be able to pull this grill forward so that you can pop up the LED headlight and then pull it out uh, so I'll go ahead and try to do that now and show you guys 10 millimeter bolt I have this little quarter inch little wrench here so I can get the bottom bolt out it'll, it'll kind of pull up lift up and this should theoretically just kind of come out yeah comes out just like that okay so i've got the headlight assembly completely out I've just kind of wiped it off a little bit just so it looks a little better on the camera. So what I have to do is, um, I've already taken the H, oh crap, I always forget, um, H1 bulb out of here. And this is all it is. It's this tiny little bulb. It's not anything spectacular. But I've taken it out of the fixture, and because of the way that this mounts is... The, the ground is on the outside or the casing of the bulb and the hot side is the middle right there and it just kind of fits inside of that um, that mount or the mount goes on to the bulb like that then there's this clip on the inside if you can see let me turn the brightness um, in there and there's this little kind of metal retainer clip that actually holds the bulb in place. But the retainer clip is the problem. The problem is I can either put terminals on this. Um, I can either put terminals on this piece so that I can fit it over here or I can directly solder this to this, which is probably what I'm gonna do. 
So what I actually did here is I unscrewed the housing from the the body or the internal casing so that I could actually get that clip around there. It's just these two little screws. The problem is is you need one of those safety bits because it has that little hole in the in the middle which I actually happen to have. Uh, so now I'm going to solder these together so that I can get these mounted. So I got my soldering gun warmed up and just going to solder it together. This isn't difficult or anything. And I've already ran heat shrink down the wire. Okay, so the LED is now mounted inside there. And I've got it soldered, got some good heat shrink. Now it's time to do the permanent mount for the uh, low beams. And this isn't hard, it's just I have to actually turn the mount on there without actually turning the bulb. Okay, so I'm a dumb dumb. Apparently, if you rotate the mount far enough, there's actually a stopper where you can actually stop and actually rotate the physical mount part of it in. I guess I didn't think to just keep turning. I just thought the whole thing turned itself. So, didn't really need to go through all of that, but there you have it. And then last but not least is the turn signal bulb. Uh, this is just a standard um, 2357 or 1157 bulb. So this just fits in there like normal. I'm going to put this in and then before I actually mount these casings back to the car, I'm going to mount the uh, load resistors and I'll show you guys which wire you're supposed to tap into. Okay, so it's getting a lot windier. Hopefully it's not terrible. So. I've got the resistor um, drilled into bare metal there, uh, or not bare metal, but uh, actual metal area. So basically what you do is you take that load resistor and you wire it in parallel with the blinker side. So on this particular car, the blinker is the white wire on the connector for the driver side. On the passenger side, it's yellow black. So. Basically what you just do is you wire that in parallel and what you're doing is you're fooling the computer into thinking that you have a regular incandescent bulb. So I kind of moved out of the wind there. It's, it's getting crazy windy today. It seems to always do that when I want to record a video. Anyway, so this is obviously this is an LED. This is a regular incandescent bulb. On my Sorento and even on cars in the past, I have probably gone through, on just the Sorento alone, I'd probably say four blinker bulbs on just, you know, the lifespan that I've had it. With LEDs, unless an LED is just completely defective from the factory or during shipping or whatever, I have yet to really have any issues with LEDs. So the reason you convert it to LEDs is so that you don't have to worry about replacing them. That's not to say that they don't go out, but periodically, you know, just check and make sure your blinkers work. But this, to me, I feel like is a more long-term cost-effective and just, you know, kind of not really worrying about, oh, my blinker is out or not out. So, yeah, that's kind of why you do it. So, I'm going to get that load resistor uh, wired up. And these are the load resistors that actually came with um, the... so. In the past, I actually bought these. It was the Oxlite. Um, I actually used the ones that I bought before because I was working on a family member's lawnmower and I used those LEDs for that lawnmower because it, for some reason, used uh, 2357 bulbs. And then these are the resistors that actually came with it. And I was running it for a good, probably... I want to say three to five minutes on the blinker and I mean it got warm but it didn't get terribly hot so that's a good indicator that 
you need to make sure that these are mounted to a metal surface. Okay, so I've got the rear lights taken off. Uh, I tried to actually take apart the plastic here so that I can look behind it. What I was actually going to do is probably mount the resistor behind here. The problem is, is there's just not enough clearance to where it won't touch this plastic. So I'm not going to do that. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is actually just mounting the resistors right here on this curved piece. So that's pretty much the only place that will clear the light. Um, and I mean, this is weather sealed, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, this doesn't get terribly dirty on the inside. I'm actually going to tap in to this right here and I'll just take off this whole mounting mechanism so I can mount it and then physically attach these back to it because I just don't see a, a better way of mounting that resistor anywhere. Okay, I got some, I got it mounted and I apologize for the wind. Uh, I've got a windscreen on, but it is just so friggin' windy today. But I've got it mounted, so now instead of taking the whole unit off and unplugging this, I just have to unplug the actual light pieces that go inside the whole fixture. It's not a big deal anymore because these are LEDs and you don't have to worry so much about, you know, touching them too terribly bad. But I'm going to put some new cloth tape on this piece to try and keep the moisture out of there. And I'm going to get this all buttoned up. And then I'll do some light tests whenever it starts getting darker outside. So it's pretty much dark right now. Um, I'm just going to do a walk around. You can see I've got the LEDs on the front. Pretty bright. Got. Oh, come on, camera. LEDs in the back. I will turn on my blinkers so you can see. Front. Or, I mean, the back. There's the front. And I'm going to turn on the lights. And I'm going to turn on the brights. Kind of ridiculous. Like. Yeah. I mean, they're lights. Nothing spectacular. 